So what does it mean to be reactive? So a good example is a spreadsheet. If I have two values here, three and three, and on this third cell, cell C, I set that equal to A1 plus B1, it's going to be six. Net, now, if I go in there and change A from three to four after the fact, C automatically updates or reacts to me changing that value. So in this case, A and B are producers of data, and cell C is consuming that data. And whenever the producers update, the consumer automatically updates or reacts to it. So let's try to replicate the spreadsheet example we just saw in JavaScript. So if I let A equal three, and I let B equal three, and then I let C equal A plus B, I could expect C to be six. And if we run that, we see that that is the case. But now if I go in here and I set A equals A plus one, and I expect C to be seven, we see that that is not the case, that adding a value to A did not cause C to change. The only way C would change is if I go in here and reassign it. So after adding one to A, I then explicitly update C and set it to the result of adding A and B together again, which then reads the latest values of A and B and assigns them to C. And so there's no reactivity here. I had to imperatively change the state of the program to keep it in sync. Now with RxJS, we can simulate the spreadsheet example. So I'm going to npmi RxJS to install that. And I'm going to delete all this. And I'm going to import subject from RxJS. And so what a subject is, is it's basically an event emitter. And so if I create a new subject, and let's call it event emitter, I can then subscribe some callback. So in this case, console log, and then I'm going to do event emitter dot next. Uh, the value is going to be hello world. And if I run this, you see hello world. So why all this work when it's three lines of code and we could have just done console log hello world. The reason why is hard to grasp with this simple example, but if you recall the spreadsheet example, we had three cells, and cells A and B were the producers of data, and cell C was the consumer. Here we have a clear produce, uh, here we have a clear consumer, and we have a clear producer of data. And so if we do goodbye world to produce additional data, and run this, we'll see that the consumer reacted to both of those events, the, the so-called nexting of the string onto that subject. So you can do this with regular callbacks. This isn't um, you know, anything that's necessarily a breakthrough. And the real power of RxJS will come with observables, which are similar to subjects and that you can subscribe to them and so forth. And they uh, have data producers upstream of them. Um, but we'll get more into observables versus subjects later. I find that subjects are a great way to start to grasp RxJS. So let's try to recreate our spreadsheet example from before. So if we have A and B as subjects, and C is going to be combine latest A and B, and then we subscribe to C, and run this. We'll see we've got an array 
where it has Hello World at the first index and Goodbye World at the second index. So it took the latest values from these two subjects and created it a new third stream out of these two source streams where this third stream emits values that are the result of combining the latest values on the two source streams. So another cool thing you can do with RxJS is let's say rather than combine latest, I want merge. What this will do is it'll give you the events one at a time from both of the source streams hello world and goodbye world. And so we can use these basic building blocks to kind of recreate our spreadsheet example where we have uh, three and three for the two producers. And then in the subscribe callback, I will take in an array A and B. I'll change this back to combine latest and this is going to be a function that takes a and adds b to it and logs that out to the console and we see that we got six and there is a type error here and it doesn't make any sense and that's actually because it's using an old version of TypeScript here. So down in the bottom in VS Code, I'm just going to switch it to the pro uh, workspace version. And that type error goes away. And so now it's telling me these types are unknown. So because this is TypeScript, I'm going to use this generic here just to say that these are numbers. If you're using JavaScript, you don't have to put this part. You can just ignore this generic right here. But this is just going to make TypeScript understand that down here we have a number when we've combined these two streams. So if we look here, A is a new subject of number, B is a subject of number, and C is an observable of an array of number number. So an array with two elements where they're both numbers. And so when we subscribe to C down here, we get this array with A and B. We take those two values and add them together. And so that then down here in the data producer, if we go down here and next a value four onto stream B and we run this, we will see six and seven. So what happened here is that we reacted. When we nexted the value four onto B, that automatically made C react because C is the result of combining the latest A and B. And down here, we have a new latest value, which is four. So that calls our subscriber with the previous value of A, which is the latest value on stream A, and four for B, which is the latest value on stream B. And then our callback runs with these new values and outputs the new result. So with this example, we've just repl replicated the spreadsheet example using RxJS. So if you notice now, we have a subject and an observable. You may be wondering what's up with that. Why is there two different things? Uh, in the next video, we'll compare and contrast these. And uh, that's when things will really start to get interesting. So stay tuned for the next video.